What's up, guys? This is the final episode of the church series. I'm so glad that you made it through all the other episodes and we're here now. I wanted to make a quick mini series. It wasn't too in depth or too long, just something to give us a good foundation, a good solid understanding of the church and what Christ is doing in the church today so we can just grow in an appreciation for it and understand it more so that we can be a part of what he's doing. So if you have been following this series on the church with me, we have seen God's design, his plan, his purpose, and direction in the previous episodes. Well, this is the final episode, so we'll be wrapping up the series with two final thoughts. What should the church look like today and how to see and operate in it? Before we get into it though, as we read our Bible, I want you to think about this. How much of this gets filtered through our own traditions, our own cultures, our own personal preferences? I wonder if the things that we think are super important are the same things that God thinks are super important. I want you to ponder that with me. So before we go, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you're getting value, and let's jump in. In Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47, after Pentecost, we see what the church should look like. I'll spare reading it right now, but a few bullet points. They were devoted to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. The reason for this was due to the Holy Spirit filling all these people. The Bible calls that being born again or regeneration. These are the same things that we should be devoted to. The Word of God, fellowship with other disciples, breaking of bread, the Lord's Supper, and prayer. Notice if we just do these few simple things, what happens? They started to give to those who had need. Day by day they were together and they had all things in common. They were thankful, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord did what? Added to their number day by day to those who were being saved. You see what it all starts with? Our devotion. The church shouldn't be worried about bells and whistles and programs and 10 best ways to grow your church. It was simple for the early church to grow because they submitted themselves to the teaching and to the Holy Spirit. God works the same way today. We don't have to come up with a plan on our own. Isn't that exactly what we learned in Exodus? God is the one who designs it. He was the one designing the 10. He was the one giving the gifts to the people. It was his plan. He's the one who leads. If you haven't been devoting yourself to these things or you're a part of a gathering or i.e. church, you know what I mean, that hasn't been doing these things, ask yourself the question, is this God's plan or man's plan? If you're seeking what God wants, he'll show you. We make everything too complicated when we already have what we need. We just need to walk in it. So my second thought is this, how should we see the church and operate in it? So I wanna show you in Ephesians chapter four. And this is what I believe how the church should be operating. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter four, he's talking about Jesus and how he gave gifts to men. I spoke about that in a few episodes back. He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. This is important. It has been said that this is the five-fold ministry. Jesus gives gifts to people so that the church can be equipped. What I believe is that these gifts should be present in the church on a universal scale, but also in a locale. Meaning, if God has brought a people together under the name of Jesus Christ, like we learned last time, he is the head, we are the body, even if you have a small congregation of people, I don't care about how many people it is, these people with their gifts should be functioning in Christ's body even today. I think we just get carried away when we see people claiming these titles. We need to remember it's not a title, it's a gift. And that gift is not something you give yourself, but Jesus gave according to his grace. The apostles and prophets are what laid the foundation is what we read in Ephesians 2.20. However, they built on the cornerstone, which is Jesus. The gifting is giving a revelation of Jesus Christ to the church. Paul is said to be a skilled master builder in 1 Corinthians chapter three. So what an apostle does is he plans and he brings light to the church. Today we see many people planting churches, some of which come from this type of gifting. We call them church planners, but they really have the same kind of gift that the apostle had. The apostle was laying foundations. The prophet we see in the New Testament is not the same as it were in the Old Testament. Prophets are not giving thus saith the Lord to countries, like it was for Israel. For instance, as we saw during COVID, many so-called prophets were wrong and had to end their ministries because they started talking about presidential elections. A prophet is one who gives revelation of Jesus Christ to the church. 
Paul talks about the gift of prophecy in 1 Corinthians 14 when he writes, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. He says the one who prophesies builds up the body of Christ, builds up the church. You see, it's not to make claims on a nation, but rather build up the body of Christ. So all of us get a clear picture of who Jesus is and it starts to expand our vision of him. Next, we have the evangelist, which proclaims the gospel to the lost, but has a special gifting, just like Paul said about Timothy when they laid hands on him. Nevertheless, his gift is also for the church. They equip and assist with this function so good soldiers of Christ can go and be a light in the community. The shepherd is one who leads the sheep, keeps them on course. He sees things 10 steps ahead. He watches the wolf coming down the mountain, wanting to take one of his sheep. He loves and cares for the people of God. So in return, they grow in their love for Jesus. The shepherd becomes a pillar. You can't move him easily from, you know, he's grounded in the word of God and the example to the flock. The teacher, lastly, is given wisdom. He's communicating the wisdom and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He becomes a mouthpiece of truth to the church. See, all these gifts will start to cross. It doesn't mean shepherds can't teach or evangelists don't care about sheep. They all are unique in the body and work in that vein very well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes that to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, various tongues, interpretation of tongues, and so forth. These gifts are from the Holy Spirit, much different than what we learned about in Ephesians chapter 4, where those giftings of the fivefold ministry were from Jesus. These giftings are given from the Holy Spirit in order to build up the body of Christ, and he gives them as he wills. In other verses, he gives even more. If you haven't seen these gifts play out before in your own life, well, Paul tells us earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. From reading how Jesus builds his church, this becomes a major part of the building process, the Holy Spirit working through us. Remember, if you've been born again, your life is not just what you see in the flesh, but you are spiritual beings, new creations, and God gives us these gifts for our edification and to build up the body of Christ. All of what we went over will give a good foundation to the plan and working God does in the church. It's simple, organic, and it's not man-made. A true expression of the church is where Christ reigns and his people are using and partaking in these examples we read. If you're just going to service every week just to listen to a sermon and not doing any of these things mentioned, I want you to consider that God has purpose for you and your purpose is not to just sit on the sidelines, but rather be a part of the game, so to speak. And as we learn, that doesn't mean you have to be a pastor. God has given you a specific gift, so use it for his glory. If you have any questions or you want to know more about our ministry, visit everyjointsupplies.org and hit the tab connect to reach out to us. We love to plant churches and see it happen in a simple, organic way that is rooted in the Bible and led by the Holy Spirit. So watch this next video here. It's something simple I think we could be doing as we could pray for this thing which will have lasting effects and lasting benefits for you and for the church. So until next time, grace and peace.